Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be answering the question, how much camber is too much negative camber? And so we're going to kind of start with a graph that looks something like this. And of course this is going to be dependent on the vehicle, the suspension, the wheels, uh, all kinds of different factors. But essentially you're going to be graphing your coefficient of friction against your camber angle. And somewhere around the negative 1 to negative 2 degrees you may find your peak coefficient of friction. And so if you have uh, less camber than that or more negative camber than that you're going to start to lose performance as you won't be able to hold quite as high of lateral forces. Now if you haven't yet watched my video on camber or camber kits you may want to check those out if you don't kind of understand the background behind this. So if you do have a tire and you give it too much negative camber, so it looks something like this as it's driving down the road, well what you're doing is you're reducing the contact patch. And this is quite a bit exaggerated, you know, it could be much, much less and still have a reduced contact patch. And it's also going to have uneven pressure distribution on the contact patch that's touching the ground. And so because of that you're going to have less grip, you're going to have uneven wear because you're going to be wearing that inside edge, and you're going to have increased heat on that section that's running on the road. And so that increased heat, uh, because there's more heat in a smaller section than being distributed across the entire tire, you can have uh, faster wear. You know, if you are actually tracking it and you're, you know, using it at peak grip, frequently it's going to wear quite a bit faster. So I wanted to kind of dive into some examples to kind of talk about this uh, and, and keep in mind that this is for performance oriented vehicles, you know, going on a track day, uh, going to autocross, you know, keeping uh, maximum lateral grip possible uh, within limits of what camber angles you can use. So for the track prep for a Camaro Z28, uh, the recommended camber angles that they have, negative 1.5 degree in the front, negative one degree in the rear, for the Nissan GTR, it's around negative 1.5 to negative 1.6. Uh, front and rear, it's slightly higher in the front than in the rear uh, for track use or daily use. Honestly, they keep them pretty close together. And then this one I thought was pretty interesting, uh, the Dodge Viper, because they have so many different packages in which you can buy it. So you've got the SRT GT, which is at negative 1.4 in the front, negative 1.15 in the back, the TA 1.0 and 2.0, negative 2.5, so pretty aggressive in the front, uh, negative 1.5 in the rear, and then the ACR, negative 2.8, an insanely high camber angle uh, for a road car, and negative 1.7 in the rear. And so looking at this, okay, what's different between these cars? Why do these have such higher camber angles? Well, the TA 1.0 and the TA 2.0, that adds a big rear wing to the back of the Viper. Um, it adds a front splitter. Uh, you've got dive planes. And then if you go to the ACR, you're even getting more aggressive. And the ACR with extreme aero actually has the highest production downforce of any uh, production vehicle. And so think about what that means. If you have super high downforce, then you can take corners at higher lateral Gs. And if you can take corners at higher lateral Gs, you're gonna be placing a greater load on your tire. So your tire is gonna kinda of wanna fold over more. You're gonna have a little bit more force on it. Uh, and so it's gonna, that camera angle is gonna be more important as the tire tread kind of warps into that corner in order to have a flat path. And so you can get away with these really aggressive camber angles if you have the downforce and you have cars that can lateral at these super high G-forces uh, with sticky tires. And so just one uh, example from racing uh, in Formula One, I was kind of looking at what Pirelli recommended to the teams, and it seemed to be about negative four for the front and about negative 2.5 for the back. And this of course varies from track to track, uh, and it can be less, it can be a little bit more. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the peak uh, coefficient of friction. Uh, it'll probably be somewhere close to it. Um, but basically the reason Pirelli is recommending something like this is because it won't uh, produce too much heat in the tire, so the tire won't overheat and fail. You know, Pirelli's looking out, uh, of course, as far as safety as well as performance when they're taking these into consideration. So you could perhaps get more performance with a little bit more negative camber out of it. Um, and you know, this doesn't, as I was saying, so that's not necessarily the peak, uh, but there are other motorsports out there where you're gonna have different situations. Like, uh, for example, NASCAR, you have very high camber angles, but also keep in mind that they have these heavily banked ovals. And so that also, along with the downforce and the sticky tires, means you can have these really high uh, forces placed, lateral forces placed on those tires, so they'll roll over quite a bit, so you can have very significant camera angles. But something like this, negative 4.0, very rare that you would ever see something close to that on a road car. Uh, this is the highest I've seen so far, and that's with the car with the highest 
uh, aerodynamic forces out there. And you know, this car, they say it can sustain 1.5 G's of lateral grip at speed, which is just insane. So, you know, around this range is probably what you're going to see uh, for a track prep vehicle. Less than that, of course, for road cars, it can be around zero degrees uh, if you're just driving around on the street. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.